my dad's one of six six boys in the family and all of the brothers fought except him and I wanted to be the fighter for him when I grew up and uh, so once I was old enough to box my my mum let me fight <laughs> and that's when the, the boxing journey started my first ever fight was November 5th 2010 I was in um, at a rugby club in Pakaranga. I had my first amateur fight. It only lasted about a minute and a half. Uh, I won first round by knockout. That was good. The moment I, I decided to take um, this boxing career seriously was when I um, turned pro in 2014 on the, the Joseph Parker undercard when he fought um, Brian Minto. I was able to get the opportunity to find that on that show and it really opened a lot of doors for me and our team. Highlights of my career was uh, when I fought for my first title back in 2016. I fought for the New Zealand title, we got that win. And then um, another highlight was when I fought on the undercard of uh, Jason Parker versus Anthony Joshua. I got to travel to England, to Wales and fight on a big stage, big arena in front of a lot of people. The winner from New Zealand, Mossy Omatangi Jr. David Tua, you know, being from South Auckland, being Samoan as well, we all shown to be like um, David Tua. We all looked up to him. When he fought for the world title against Lennox Lewis, uh, I wanted to be like that. <laughs> My mom's from Faleula, my dad's from Malie. Um, I'm married, I have one son, and um, I have one older sister and one younger brother. Currently living in um, Brisbane. I moved over last year, June, and I've yeah, been over a year now, so it's been good. I attended the greatest school in the world, De La Salle College in Mangu East, yeah. Um, just a normal, South Auckland childhood, you know, playing rugby, playing sports, school, nothing too fancy, you know, just a normal Samoan typical family. Church on Sundays, gongai, no more hidings here and there. <laughs> Other than that, it's just, yeah, it's normal fun childhood, yeah. The physical and mental pain that I go through through training is like <laughs> battering my body in the gym, you know, day and night, making making sure the stream works, you know, and then having to to go to work after that as well to provide for my family, and then putting on the the father hat when I go back to um, back home. And, being the dad I need to be, being the husband to my wife, my, being the dad to my son. I'm training here at um, Dragonfire Boxing Club here in Kujin. And um, I'm living here at the gym from Monday to Saturday. I drive about an hour and a half back to Brisbane and Ipswich to um, spend time with my family and go to church. And then it's back again on Monday, back to training and work, so yeah. One of the lowest um, moments in my career as to why I took uh, two years off was because um, I got caught up in life and uh, life caught up with me, family, and um, got distracted. When COVID hit, um, I was the sole provider for my family at the time and I had to um, put boxing on hold find find new work because I got laid off because of COVID and then after that I just I f fell off and I wanted to quit boxing altogether. I left my dreams and just went to work. I was supposed to move here in 2020 actually but, but then when COVID hit we stayed put back in New Zealand. I had to, me and my wife had to find new work. When I couldn't train um, it, 
everything just spiraled down and I, I, I forgot about boxing, forgot about training. I packed the weight on. I ballooned up to um, 115 kilos. And, um, yeah. I lost all focus on, from boxing after that. But through the grace of God, we, we came back. Me and my wife and my son, we finally made a move over to Australia. And we gave um, boxing another crack. My wife knew that deep down in my heart, my, my passion and my drive for boxing wasn't finished. And she said to me, you know, she doesn't want me to um, regret anything when I get old. I don't want to, she doesn't want to see me regret um, what could have been in my career. So um, we decided to come down here to Dragonfire Boxing and give this boxing career a real crack. I started cutting weight, started training hard. Man, through the grace of God, man. We're back and we're almost there, you know. After this fight, who knows? It's April 27th, 2023. Mm. Fight for life. Yep. Tell us about your opponent, Jerome Kaplow. Yep. And where does this lead you in the rankings if you win? This fight will catapult us in the top five if, if, we, if we can get past Jerome. I know Jerome, we've been training partners for years. We used to help each other in the ring for sparring when I was um, living in New Zealand. So we know each other. This is a big fight for um, our team, for me especially and my family. This fight will take us to um, one closer step to accomplish my dream of being a world champion. I respect Jerome, I respect him. And taking this fight, well, there was no malice, no bad intention behind it. This was just business. This is just business. May the best man win. I took this fight for my family and for my dream. I want to thank um, my wife and my son, my family, my friends, my close friends, who you knows who you are, and um, my sponsors, Parker Films, Attention Detailing, Interseed Security, Brown Pride, oh, Little Paws, Big Hearts, and Dylan Electrical. Giant step get slayed, trying to be brave And the days every tongue confessing every knee will bend And then bow to the sensei Tell him nah, I don't play games Train hard and the secret boy been praying Take all the